Hello, everybody. It is so great to be back with you again for another week. Do you remember the rhyme that we started with last time? Can you do that with me again this week? Eyes of faith, look and see. God sent his son for you and me. In our Sunday school lessons, we have been learning a lot about Moses and the Israelites. And we have heard how many different ways God has helped his people. Do you remember the Bible lesson about the Israelites crossing the Red Sea when the king and his army were trying to get the Israelites? God helped them by making the waters spread apart so the Israelites could go through on dry ground. And do you remember the lesson about God giving the people of Israel manna and quail to eat when they didn't have any other food to eat? God was helping his people. And just last time, we heard about those poisonous snakes that came and bit many of the people. But God had them saved when they trusted in him and looked to that snake that Moses had made. God helped his people in so many ways after they left Egypt and were in the desert. And in today's Sunday School lesson, we are going to hear about another way that God helped the Israelites. Today, we are going to find out how God kept a very special promise that he made to the Israelites. Let's find out what happened. For many years, God had promised to give his people the land of Canaan. And finally, the time had come for the Israelites to enter that promised land, that land of Canaan. But the time had also come when Moses was going to stop leading God's people, and a new leader would be chosen. So when that time came for Moses to be done leading God's people, Moses prayed to the Lord. Can you fold your hands with me? Pretend you are praying like Moses. And Moses prayed, and he said, Lord, please choose another man to lead your people. And God answered. He said, have Joshua stand in front of my people. Have Joshua stand in front of my people, the Israelites, and tell them he is their new leader. So Moses did what God said. And then Moses told the people, Joshua is your new leader and God will be with you. He will be with you while you fight against your enemies. He will give you the land of Canaan. Be strong. Do not be afraid. The Lord will never leave you. And Moses also told them, read the word of God. Study the Bible, obey it, and teach it to your children so that they will learn to love and obey God too. Then Moses went up onto a nearby mountain. And while Moses was up there on that mountain, God showed him all the land of Canaan. From up there, Moses could see that promised land, the land of Canaan. And God said, this is the land that I promised to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. This is the land that I am giving to my people. And then Moses died, and God buried him. The Israelites were sad that Moses had died, but they knew that God had given them Joshua to now be their leader. And God told Joshua, be strong, follow my word. I will be with you just as I was with Moses. And God also said, tell the people to get ready because very soon I will bring them across the Jordan River 
and into the land of Canaan. Let's draw that river, the Jordan River. And on the other side of that Jordan River was the land of Canaan. So Joshua told the people to get ready. And when all the people were ready, the priests took the special gold chest from the tent where they worshipped God. And Joshua told the priests, carry the gold chest toward the Jordan River and have the rest of the people follow you. And they did this. And as soon as the priests came to the Jordan River, as soon as their feet touched the river, God did a wonderful and amazing thing. He stopped the water from flowing back and forth. He stopped the water from moving and made it pile up on the sides so that there was a dry path right through the middle of the river, a path where the Israelites could cross the Jordan River and enter into the land of Canaan. So the priests followed that path, and they carried that gold chest to the middle of the Jordan River, and they stayed there while the rest of the Israelites crossed through the river right through the middle of the Jordan River on that dry land and into the promised land, the land of Canaan. Then God told Joshua, choose 12 men and have each man pick up one stone from the place in the middle of the river where the priests are standing. So Joshua did that. Joshua had 12 men pick up 12 stones, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve stones they picked up from the middle of the Jordan River where they were crossing through. And they carried those into the land of Canaan. And as soon as they had crossed over, as soon as the priests carrying the gold chest, walked out of the river, and those 12 stones had been picked up. When everybody was across the river, God made the waters start to flow again. And that dry path was gone, and the waters flowed again through the river. Then, when they had all reached the other side, and they were all in the land of Canaan, Joshua then took those 12 stones and made them into a pile. 11, 12, 12 stones he piled up on the other side of the river. And Joshua told the people, when your children ask you what these stones mean, Tell them how God stopped the water in the river so that you could cross on dry land. God wants you to remember his promise and what he has done to help you to keep his promise. And God wants you to worship only him. God had kept his promise to lead the Israelites, to lead his people into the land of Canaan. Do you have your student lesson with you today? Do you have your paper? Look at that picture on your lesson sheet today. What did God do so the Israelites could go into the promised land? He stopped the water in the river, didn't he? He made a dry path right through that river so that the Israelites could cross into the land of Canaan. God kept his promise to lead the Israelites into the land of Canaan. God keeps all his promises. Do you remember one of our very first lessons about Adam and Eve and how Adam and Eve sinned against God? But even though Adam and Eve had sinned, God still loved them. And God 
promised that he would someday send a savior. And he did. He sent his son, Jesus, to be born as a baby here on earth. And then Jesus grew up. He lived a life without sinning. And then he died on the cross. He took a punishment that we should have had, but he didn't stay dead. On Easter morning, three days later, the grave where Jesus had been was empty. He was alive again. And he did all of that to save us. He keeps all his promises. He promised Adam and Eve that he would send a savior, and he did. Jesus came and did everything to save us from our sins. How many promises does God keep? He keeps all of his promises. In the Bible, God promises that he will take us to heaven, that he will give us the crown of victory, the victor's crown. That means life in heaven. Listen to our memory treasure today. It says, I will give you life as your victor's crown. Can you say that with me, please? I will give you life as your victor's crown. That means that God is promising us life in heaven. Jesus is the victor. That means he won. He got the victory over sin and death and the devil. And because of his victory, he will give us life he will give us the victor's crown in heaven. Remember that stone pile that Joshua made? In a little while, you can try making a pile of things at your home too to remind you of that. What did that stone pile remind the Israelites of? It reminded the Israelites of God's promise that he kept his promise to give them the land of Canaan, to bring them into the promised land. God kept his promise to the Israelites, and God has promised us life in heaven, and we can be sure that he will keep that promise too. God keeps all of his promises. We can trust that whatever he says will come true. He will do what he says. He will keep every promise he makes. Let's close our lesson with a prayer. Can you fold your hands and pray with me? Dear God, thank you for keeping all your promises, especially your promise to send Jesus to take away all our sins. Keep our faith strong and help us always trust that you will give us life in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you still have your lesson sheet? I told you that there was an activity for you to do in a little while. On the back of the sheet, your grown-ups at home can help you see the activity where you can try and make a pile of 12 items in your house, reminding you of that pile of stones that Joshua made to remind the Israelites that God keeps his promises. I am